If your vehicle has 75,000 miles on it, should you switch to a high mileage motor oil or are both oils basically the same thing? We have two different brands to test today, Mobile One and SuperTech, so let's find out. We'll see if high mileage oil conditions rubber engine components. Then we'll see which brand flows the best when the oil is extremely cold. We'll see which oil offers the best protection against engine wear. I paid an independent oil lab to provide us with a detailed report for all four motor oils. This is the first time I've tested SuperTech's and Mobile One's API SP motor oils. In the past, I tested their SN and SN Plus motor motor oil. Let's send out the oil to an oil testing lab. The oil lab will provide us a lot of great information on the oil's anti-wear additive package, detergent dispersant content, as well as the oil's total base number. By the way, I always shake the oil containers before sending off samples for testing since some of the additive package may actually fall out of suspension and settle at the bottom of the container. Synthetic oil is supposed to flow better compared to conventional oil when it's cold so that moving parts begin getting lubricated sooner. So I'll go ahead and place new oil in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and we'll leave the oil in the freezer for 24 hours. While prices seem to be going up faster than I could upload videos, right now 5 quarts of the SuperTech is right at $20. All the oil we'll be testing is SAE 5W30. For the 5 quart container, just like the full synthetic, the high mileage version costs right at $20. The front of both oil containers look nearly identical, 10,000 miles of superior wear protection, and both are full synthetic. However, one is the high mileage full synthetic version. The high mileage version is for engines over 75,000 miles. It has all the same ratings, including the API SP and ILSAC GF6A. Both oils have the DEXO certification. SuperTech claims their full synthetic high mileage oil offers better wear protection compared to their regular full synthetic, so let's test that. So let's see how the oils stack up in the first test comparing the SuperTech against the SuperTech high mileage oil. I'll first measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers. We definitely want to find out if high mileage oil conditions rubber engine components better than the regular full synthetic. I couldn't find four identical hardened oil seals or O-rings, however I did find a rubber tire that's about 40 years old and it's very hard. Let's also add some O-rings that are in good shape to see if the oil prevents them from becoming hard. Let's crank up the heat to around 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. And this one looks very close with both oils putting off about the same amount of vapor. The test for this is called the NOAC Volatility Test. This is an ASTM test which exposes oil to a lot more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. So at the end of this test, we'll find out how much evaporation has occurred with each brand. Then we'll be using the cooked oil for additional testing to see which oil is the best. It's been right at two hours, so once the oil is cooled off, we'll weigh each of the oil containers to see how much evaporative loss occurred. And the SuperTech oil container started out weighing 405.36 grams and now it weighs 399.64, which is a loss of 5.72 grams. The SuperTech high mileage oil container started off weighing 441.84 grams and now it weighs right at 436.27 grams, a loss of 5.57 grams. So the SuperTech high mileage performed just a little bit better than the regular full synthetic. Before we get to the cold oil flow test, let's first test the lubricity or the film strength of the oil. Let's begin by adding 40 milliliters of oil that's been exposed to heat into the test cups. Before beginning the test, I'll coat the test wheel as well as the test pin with motor oil to avoid damage caused by a dry start. The lubricity test will provide us with some great information on how the oil performs. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars on each of the bearings to determine which oil provides the best film strength. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll definitely provide us with some great information. Before we move on to the high mileage SuperTech, I'll first use brake parts cleaner to clean the test equipment and then use sandpaper to resurface the test wheel. And a watt meter is about the same as a regular SuperTech. And there seems to be very close to the same amount of friction with the high mileage oil. So they seem to be very close in performance. And a SuperTech full synthetic is on the left and a SuperTech high mileage is on the right. It's obviously very close, so I use the microscope with my calipers to get an accurate measurement. The size of the wear scar on the regular SuperTech is just a little bit smaller than the high mileage oil. Before we test the film strength of the Mobile One oils, let's first compare how all four oil brands perform at minus 40 degrees Celsius, which is also minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The SuperTech is in lane one all the way to the left, SuperTech high mileage lane two, Mobile One lane three, and Mobile One high mileage lane four. And the Mobile One high mileage is the first one out of the gate. And the SuperTech high mileage is in a close second. And the regular full synthetic SuperTech is just behind the SuperTech high mileage. So the high mileage oils are actually flowing faster when they're very cold compared to the regular full synthetics. And I'm really surprised to see the Mobile One in a distant fourth place. And the Mobile One high mileage oil seems to be unfazed by the extreme cold and is flowing very quickly. And the SuperTech oils are way out in front of the Mobile One. And it's the Mobile One high mileage for the win. And the SuperTech high mileage just finished in second and the regular full synthetic SuperTech just finished in third. And the Mobile One full synthetic finally finished the race in a distant fourth. 
Prices are definitely subject to change. A five quart container of the Mobile One as well as the high mileage version costs right at $25. Both oils claim to protect for 10,000 miles guaranteed. The full synthetic claims to keep your engine running like new while the high mileage says it's designed for engines with over 75,000 miles. I find it very interesting that the Mobile One full synthetic has the Dexo certification but the high mileage version does not. Most of the claims on the back of both oil containers look identical. However, the high mileage version is formulated to prevent leaks and to protect engines with over 75,000 miles. So the Mobile One high mileage without the Dexo certification flows better than the Mobile One with the certification. Let's compare the evaporative loss of the Mobile One against the Mobile One high mileage. And both oils are doing very well on this test with about the same amount of vapor. Just like I did with the Supertech oils, the Mobile One oils were rotated every 10 minutes for two hours and the two hours is over. And the Mobile One started out at 416.91 grams and it's down to 412.36, a loss of 4.55 grams. While it was very close, the high mileage oil once again performed better, only down 4.5 grams. Before we test the film strength of the Mobile One against the Mobile One high mileage, let's first place the cooked oils in the freezer. It's gonna be very interesting to see if the heat exposure hurts the performance of any of the oils. Let's go and test the full synthetic Mobile One first on the lubricant tester. And the Mobile One seems to be doing just a little bit better than the Supertech oils based upon the energy usage. So the Mobile One high mileage oil without the Dexo certification flows better. So will the Mobile One high mileage oil also provide better evaporative loss as well as anti-wear protection? It's really hard to say at this point, but I think the Mobile One high mileage is actually doing a little bit better than the regular Mobile One. However, both Mobile One oils seem to be doing a little bit better than the Supertech oils. Regular Mobile One is on the left and high mileage is on the right. And the size of the wear scars are very close at 7.34 millimeters for the Mobile One full synthetic and 7.29 for the Mobile One high mileage. So the high mileage oil actually did better than the regular. Regarding wear resistance, the Mobile One high mileage came out on top with the smallest wear scar of 7.29 millimeters. Mobile One full synthetic finished in second at 7.34, Supertech 7.4, and Supertech high mileage 7.46 millimeters. For evaporative loss, the Mobile One high mileage came out on top at only 4.5 grams. The full synthetic Mobile One performed about the same at 4.55. Supertech high mileage 5.57 grams and Supertech 5.72. For evaporative loss, the Mobile One oils definitely performed better. Let's go ahead and kick off our next test to see if the heat exposure impacted the flow speed of the oil when it's very cold. And the Mobile One high mileage in lane four is out of the gate first, and the Supertech high mileage is second, the same as last time. And regular full synthetic Supertech is third and pretty close behind the Supertech high mileage. Mobile One in lane three is once again in fourth place, but it's definitely a little bit more motivated this time. And the Mobile One high mileage is holding on to a pretty strong lead and it's not slowing down. And it's Mobile One high mileage for the win. And the Supertech Supertech high mileage is able to hold off the Supertech and is second to cross the finish line. And the regular full synthetic Supertech is third and regular full synthetic Mobile One fourth place. So once again, the high mileage oils flowed better than the regular full synthetics. And it took very close to 500 grams of force to fold over the new rubber O-rings before exposure to the hot oil. And none of the oils were able to prevent the O-rings from hardening. 350 degrees is just way too much heat. So let's go ahead and change up the experiment. During the evaporative loss test, the oil hit some pretty high temperatures and some of the ingredients may have burned off. So I'll go ahead and add four ounces of new oil to each of the containers and then heat the oil for two hours. We'll keep the oil around 200 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll go ahead and rotate the oil containers. It's been right at two hours, so I'll allow the oil to cool off overnight and then we'll check back on this in about 12 hours. Let's see if the oils kept the O-rings from hardening. And a new O-ring that has not been exposed to oil has a diameter between 0.1225 and 0.1235 inches. It weighs 1.91 grams and takes 137 grams to fold over. Let's first test a regular full synthetic Supertech. And a Supertech O-ring weighs 1.86 grams or about 0.05 grams less than the new one. And it took about 10 grams less pressure than the new one to fold over. And the oil exposure did not cause the O-ring to swell. And the Supertech high mileage weighs the same as new at 1.91 grams. However, the diameter of the O-ring is just a little bit larger than new between 0.124 and 0.125 inches. At 124 grams of folded O-ring, it's 3 grams less or pretty much the same as the regular Supertech. And the Mobile One O-ring weighs 1.87 grams or a small amount less than new. No change from the original size of the O-ring. 134.36 grams is very close to the same force to fold the O-ring ring is the new one. And the Mobile One high mileage O-ring weighs the same as the Mobile One O-ring at 1.87 grams. And the size of the O-ring might be just a little bit larger than new, but not by much. 129 grams of fold the O-ring. If you'd like to see the original oil analysis results, I'll leave a link in the video description to all four reports. Three of the four brands had one part per million aluminum and the same for iron, which is pretty typical and nothing to be worried about. Fortunately, there's no other harmful metals in the new oil. Barium, boron, calcium, and magnesium are detergents dispersants. I'm pretty surprised to see that the Supertech oils have about 500 parts per million more detergents dispersants compared to the Mobile One oils. However, Mobile One does seem to have a little bit better base oil as demonstrated on the lubricity tester and the evaporative loss test. 
Also, SuperTech uses a little bit higher concentration of calcium, while Mobile One favors magnesium. If you want your engine to last a long time, an anti-wear additive package is very important. And the Mobile One high mileage oil came out on top at 1,629 parts per million with a very nice looking anti-wear package. SuperTech high mileage has the second highest amount at 1,546. So the high mileage oil in this showdown offer better wear protection than the regular full synthetics. The total base number is the oil's ability to neutralize acids, and once again, the high mileage oils have the advantage at 6.8 compared to 6.7 for the regular full synthetics. With that being said, 6.7 is a pretty good number. Let's take a closer look at the tire pieces that were exposed to the hot oil and then soaked for about 12 hours. This is a tire that's around a year old and it's around a 63. I removed the excess oil and then allowed them to be exposed to air for three days. To try to get as accurate results as possible, I applied a 2.5 pound weight on top of the durometer for a 15 second period and took several samples each. And the control was not not exposed to oil and has a hardness of 79, so it's very hard. And the regular full synthetic SuperTech is very close to a hardness of 68, so 11 points softer than the control. And the SuperTech high mileage did a little bit better than the regular full synthetic at 64.5. And Mobile One moves into second place behind the SuperTech high mileage at 66.5. And the Mobile One high mileage did just a little bit better than the regular Mobile One at 65.5. So the high mileage oils for each brand did help just a little bit. After every oil video comes a lot of jokes about Project Farms coffee. So I decided to come up with a coffee brand called Ozzy's Coffee, including three different options. Of course, there's Octane Booster, and if you're like me, you need a jump starter in the morning, and finally, some full throttle in the afternoon. There's a link in the video description. I have a couple of vehicles with well over 200,000 miles, and I like using the high mileage oil to help slow or to prevent the oil leaks. However, the high mileage oil doesn't seem to do a good job, for me at least, at stopping oil leaks. Regarding the oils tested in this video, I really like the Mobile One high mileage oil. It performed extremely well, However, it does not have the DEXO certification. So if your vehicle's under warranty, just be careful with that. So would I use the high mileage SuperTech in my vehicles? Absolutely, it's a great price at $20 and it also performed very well, a great value oil. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.